Yes, sir. Crew season is back. Yes, sir. And, uh, all right, man. The thing is, is that they missing Kenny. This one was last week's episode though. This ain't, um, the recent one. I think the recent one, all four of them was there. Uh, always a good episode when these, when these brothers do a podcast. I wish they got more views, but it sounds like they pockets ain't hurting. Cause I, I heard Trill say that they getting about five figures a month off this, off this podcast. And they getting like, what about, about 15, 20 K views, you know, per, per pot, you know, they probably getting, oh, that's right. That's probably not including merch and stuff. So I forgot about that. <clears throat> Yeah, so let's get right into it. Men are the reason women are so independent today. Let's see what the brothers got to say about this. And last one of the day we're going to get into. Uh, the reason women are so independent mm -hmm. today. I'm going to play this clip, man, get y'all take on it. These women nowadays want to be so independent and they want to be their own boss. And um, I don't need a man. And well, Background why, music, we have to take responsibility for that. Yeah. Because the black woman has had to raise the children alone and hold down the community alone for quite a long time because Cap, the black woman has the option to sleep with whoever she wants to sleep with. The man is the one who can sleep with what he can get. If he can get a bad bitch, he gonna sleep with a bad bitch. If all he can get is ugly bitches, then all he gonna <laughs> get is ugly. And if he can't get none, then he ain't sleeping with shit. The woman make all the choices. If you choose bad, that's your fault. You chose bad. But it's also their fault as well when the government gave them that option to take the money or keep the man in the house. You made the option to kick the nigga out the house. Y'all been fucking our shit up for decades. Because of the war against black men. So we cannot expect our women to be submissive when they had a history of having to take care of the whole house, the himself. man and the woman by themselves. So ass. I think we as black men can be somewhat disingenuous <clears throat> when we accuse black women of being too headstrong. She had to be in order to survive. And I think that if we want them to transform, to adopt a more feminine posture, because we would like that. But before she can do that, she has to be absolutely certain that we're going to hold her down. She has to be absolutely certain that we're not going to walk out on her, that when we commit to her, we're committing to her for good. Because sometimes it's best to stay in a struggle than to have somebody sell you a fairy tale of how they can make things better only to walk out on you. You understand? I wouldn't want us to do a Deion Sanders. You understand? Ain't no way you threw Deion Sanders. Them, them niggas won games and they got he got him them a... See, I can't stand this nigga right here. I really can't. This nigga, Umo, Dion got them a whole new football field off of his name. Got, got them a whole new locker room off of his name. They won a whole bunch of games off of his name, put asses in them seats. Money came in the, into the college again. Cause it won't coming into college that trash ass hbcu couldn't have been my um hbcu north carolina a t ain't struggling bitch. come to our uh, come to a t dion it, it, it wouldn't have been like that over here you would have been winning you would have been winning games without you imagine if we had you bro we would have been competing with alabama i can't stand this nigga right here he is a racist everything is something against the white person i can't stand this dude Come there and get everybody hopes up and then walk out on them. Dr. Umar. I don't like the shot at the end. Dr. I, I, I don't Umar. like that neither. She stole from people. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that bitch ass. Well, I ain't gonna call him no bitch ass nigga, but I, I just can't stand that nigga, bro. Really a racist, bro. He done stole from a lot of people and they tried to steal from Dion. That's why he walked. And, and he know that. Smooth, he know that shit. He just trying to pander. I can't stand pander, niggas. I can't. But all, all the rest of that shit, I fuck with it. He right. All the rest of it, the first part of that, yeah, all that. He right, man. 
So, so what is the frustration? Because I mean, we hear that in a lot in this space, right? So, oh man, one or two masculine man, they act like they don't need a man. They this, they that. Like I, can, I don't want no masculine ass woman. Like they talk as if these women are masculine on their own, but married, or because they just feel like being masculine. Like, what's what's your take on that in comparison I to what you had like to say? This generation, of, like our generation, we was raised by the women that was forced to be that that he talking about. Mm. So they just instilled in the girls these days what the women these days to take care of yourself get your own stuff don't be waiting on no man don't take it don't take anything from a man all that type of stuff but that last generation yeah they was the ones really had to put their feet on the ground and suffer through all this shit where the men went in the house men didn't even want to didn't even want to be fathers you know what i'm saying the, the drug episodes the mass incarceration of black men you know what i'm saying it's them still lynching us doing their era of things <clears throat> mm-hmm. So of course, you you are flooding the street with drugs, woman, and you gotta raise kids through that. Of course, you raising your daughters to be strong. I'm fucking with the demon slayer hats and move. At the same time, with your boys, you holding them tight because you know what the world is waiting. You know what the world waiting. To, you know the uh, the world that's waiting on them is about to do to them. You know what I'm saying? So you trying to build your daughters up to be strong enough to take what what they had to go endure. And then at the same time, you, in a sense, from what I see, you try to make your sons not so aggressive, not so outspoken, not so dominant, because all them postures on life of black men, they kill us for nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know what I'm saying, in our generation, when you, when you, when, when we all got our first call, your mom used to be like, hey, if the police pull you over, hey, listen to everything. Put your hand on the wheel, yes, sir, no, sir. So over respect to get home, you know what I'm saying. But for women, they wasn't they wasn't saying that for women. Just be careful, baby. Mm-hmm. Just be careful. Or or they was giving warnings, but it was in a different fashion. <clears throat> yeah. In terms of being fearful of men. Of men. Be real, mm-hmm. but yeah. You know what I'm saying. So th- th- that's what I see. So our generation, I think the these women were raised by strong women that just had to do what they had to do to survive. Mm-hmm. And the kids are a product of it. The women are a product of it. So that's why you got a lot of women these days. So I'm independent. I don't need no man. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I see. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Oh, what's your thoughts on it, man? Like you said that the dynamics of these feminine women are not necessarily a fault of their own. Environmental circumstances kind of turned them into that. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Um, and also, too, some of it too is on the men, um, because the men that were in the household, you know, you got to think about all the men that is the same thing. You know, I'm your father. I can provide for you. You know, what I'm saying if that man don't match up to what I bring, mm. then you know, he, you know, he not good for you and stuff like that. Not, <clears throat> not really setting the stage to like these things. You still will have to grow and mm. go through, but right? mm-hmm. not just come out the bat. This is what the man should be having. Mm. And then that's how you get, you know, some of the younger women dating older guys because mm-hmm. they look for that establishment. They look for that security. They look for all that stuff because that's what their father emulated. Mm. So uh, it, part of it, you know, it's, it's us too. It's like one, it's, it's of course just how we, from everything, from the crack epidemic to, you know, even the wars in the 20s, you know, early, early on, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, you know, all that stuff. It's just been passed on to us. And then- the, the, Here's the thing, though. Uh, here's the thing. We were building, we were uh, thriving until they came over. And you know what I mean by they, they came over and the day, I think they bombed, what city was it? It was either Atlanta or it was um, someplace in Oklahoma. I can't remember where it was, but you know, they had a little mass killing spree over there to stop what we was doing. Every time a nigga starts to go past his limits, and he started to do things like LeBron. I cross my fingers. As much as he do for the black community, I hope they don't try to. Oh, this nigga was raping bitches. All of a sudden, you know, just all of a sudden, uh, we got to stop him from doing what he doing because he is trying to make other niggas win. Uh, what's his name? Not Chris Paul, but. Uh, Rich Paul, that's his name, his agent, started taking all the superstars as an agent. 
they had to cut him off and slow him down. Now you need a, a master's degree in order to, to be an agent or something or something like that or bachelors. I, I he didn't even go to college. He just came with LeBron. Your name is LeBron name is attached to rich Paul. So, um, they, they put a, a barrier in place. I think he's getting his degree now or something like that. So yeah. That's, that's, that's what happens. And it's like, we, we was thriving, but kind of, it's like our generation is barrier. is bearing all that weight, trying to make that change. Not mm -hmm. saying other generations didn't, but now we have more information it, than ever. Did, we have more opportunities but... than ever. Um, more fathers today, especially black men are present in their households than ever. Well, not, not ever, but you know, going back to like how it used to be. Mm -hmm. So I think we're making some changes, but yeah, it's, it's part of just, all of that stuff and then us just saying hey go out there get your degree secure yourself because i don't want to see you struggling or anything like that so you don't necessarily need a man you don't mm -hmm. because if you can get your education get a nice house car provide <clears throat> and and be great on your own you know you don't need nobody but they don't teach them how to work alongside of within a, yeah right and i think from us it was the other way around like we were raised to do these things for women. Mm -hmm. No, I don't I don't remember anybody raising us like just just go get your bag and don't worry about nothing else. You don't need nothing. You know, like, no. Nah. Yeah, you know, you of course I kinda agree with him right here. I, I don't want no girl that need me. I, I want I, I want a girl that want me. I think there's a difference. I think if you need me, then you then if I say get out my house, it might be a problem. But if you want me, then there's a difference. That means there's, there's something about me that you like for real need. You just, you just have to be there for a certain time. I, I, I don't like that. Of course you may have had men telling you to get on these women and you know, all that stuff, but <clears throat> it still came a time where it was, when you done with all that, you need to get a family. Right. You need to settle down. You need to think about your future. Fuck all that. You know, so we've kind of got all the conversation, not just kind of one side. Valid. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, you know, it's just like somebody that grew up in a, in a neighborhood where it was, it was a whole lot of drive-by shootings and stuff like that. And, you know, you grow up in that neighborhood, and again, people are going to adapt to what their environment entails. So if there's a lot of shooting going on in my neighborhood, you know, I'll probably wear a vest every day if it's necessary. See what I'm saying? So basically what men are asking women to do is, despite the fact of 10 years straight or 15 years straight of them having to wear that vest, but, you know, they asking a the woman to just take the vest off and feel comfortable in, uh, in the environment to where shooting going on. So the, the the example I'm giving, right, is that this woman didn't grow up with a man. Everything she's ever heard about a man has been horrible. Mm -hmm. Everything she's ever seen in regards to a man has been horrible. Mm -hmm. From the man her mama dated, to the man her sister dated, her cousin dated, whatever the case may be. It's, it's horrible imaging all the way around. And on top of that, the mama is on her like, hey, when you get out there, you watch out for these men because these men will put stuff in your drink. <coughs> these men will kidnap you. These men will take sex from you if you don't give it to them. Thanks. These men are manipulating you. They don't. They only coming around you for one thing, all of that, right? So you take all of that environmental programming mm -hmm. and then you send this woman out into the world and expect her to just drop those guards and be open to whatever type of man is coming into her life, be able to vet men and, and see the good in men and, and all of these things. She has to break 15 years of programming to be able to do that. So we can't sit and talk like, okay, they, they just wake up one day and they just well, want to put it like be, that, you know, I challenging men at every turn or questioning a man's motives at every turn and lacking trust and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a choice that they made. That was them ad adapting to the environment, just like the scenario I gave earlier. If you leave outside the crib, vest on. That's just, it's, it's instinct because you know that that's what this neighborhood is. And you do that long enough, you can move to a better neighborhood, but your habits are still gonna be the same mm -hmm. until that neighborhood proves <clears throat> that right. it's safe. Kind of like a rapper. Even right. though even though he making all that money, still doing the same dumb shit he used to do when he was a hood. Programming. Absolutely. I'm wearing this vest every day because things were shooting in my neighborhood every single day. I don't trust nothing. I want to be on point. I want to be on guard. I don't lost my, a lot of my friends and died or a lot of my friends, whatever the case may be, and I ain't going. So this is what I'm doing to protect myself. It's the same thing with women. So as men, I think you got to have a bit of grace or 
leave those women alone completely and go get the women who who grew up in a better neighborhood. And then they got a lot of women mm-hmm. followers though. Or go get the women who did have that father figure in their life, or who yeah, does have man. a bit of trust in men, who right does in you know heard some type of positivity. <clears throat> about a man within their life and then hit the ground running with them. But the fact is, is men don't do that. They are to get with a woman who didn't have that and bash her for not being that type of woman who had that upbringing. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it boils down to. Like, I, it's a lot of women who would love to be feminine, man. Would love to be laid back. Would love to just trust your judgment and what you got going and your plan and just do you, baby. Take care of us. Would love that. But they've never seen that work out. And they pass all the way from a kid to the day you met her. They've never right. seen it work out. Even the men that they dated before that right. sold them dreams and lied, right. dropped the right. ball. On top of everything else that they've been taught and told. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. So the times I did jump out there to take the risk, I fell on my damn face. Mm-hmm. So how can you expect me to just walk in that situation and just be open to whatever it is that you want to do and not be questioning everything you're doing just to make sure? And then once you earn that level of trust, then slowly that, that, that barricade starts to come down little by little by little by little. But you're earning that. Yeah, but see, <clears throat> I'm going to stop it right here. Uh, he <laughs> He's already married, so I don't expect him to know this. I'm not breaking down no fucking barricade. The shit better already be broken down when I get there. I'm not about to take no back talk from no girl and I'm not about to be taking no kind of bullshit. So if she got like 15 years of programming to break, break that shit on your own. Uh, Or I'm pretty sure there's a man that's going to be out there that's going to willing to take that risk and, and take that time with you. I'm pretty sure there's a man like that out here. Can't be me though. I feel it. But it can't be me. Crew season. Men are the reason women are so independent. What y'all think about that? Let me know in the comment section. I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Peace.